The depiction of women goes as far as the early phrase of damsel in distress. The early age of comic books with the launch of Superman and Batman, the common theme of rescuing a female victim was seen from issue to issue. However, during the golden age of comics, other characters known as Betty Bates, Lady at Law, Black Venus, Fatoma, Lady Luck, Miss Victory, Phantom Lady, just to name a few, were females doing their best to save the day. However, it wasn't until All-Star Comics issue 8, Wonder Woman made her first appearance, popularizing female heroines. Welcome to The Way It Is, a show that looks at the representation of others through the use of media and the arts. Now, prior to the golden age of comic books in which superheroes were the talk of the town, Noel Brinkley created Brinkley Girls. As early as 1913, the art by Noel Brinkley appearing in American newspapers were drawings of the Brinkley Girls, whether they be working women in factories or on a farm, it looked at their pursuit of a career. With her art, the Brinkley Girls fought for the suffrage movement and the right of decent pay and those working for the war effort. During this time, however, Margaret Sanger in 1912 wrote for the New York Call entitled What Every Girl Should Know. It covers subjects such as intercourse, pregnancy, and childbirth. However, with the US Post Office banning Part 12 due to being too obscene, Part 12 being called some consequences of ignorance and silence, it was replaced with an announcement saying what every girl should know. Nothing. During World War I, however, Brinkley created a comic serial called Golden Eyes and Her Hero Bill. It focused on a feminist woman called Golden Eyes with her dog as smart as Lassie, the plot followed Golden Eyes going to France in order to contribute to the war. With getting a German officer drunk and stealing his secrets as she delivers them to her boyfriend's base, a battle breaks out, ending with her having to drag her wounded boyfriend to safety. Yet after the war, Brinkley pioneered the flapper cartoon. With having no contribution to their text, her women came out as empty-headed party girls. However, these panels opened the flapper trend and inspired Ethel Hayes to create Flappy Fanny, which covered similar ground of women rebelling against prohibition and believing in women's rights. After the stock market crashing came to the 1930s, an increase of pulp magazines, Weird Tales being known as the most famous, and Brunish was known for a work of providing women being tortured or submissive from the years 1933 to 1938. With the ability to arouse a male viewer, Margaret Brunish often received complaints of the sexist nature of her work. The reader is often unaware that the artist was indeed a woman. With the reveal of M standing for Margaret in 1934, complaints of the erotic nature increased. Now, during the work of Anne Burnage, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle, made her first appearance in WAGS issue 1 in 1937. As the inspiration for the character was an 1886 jungle goddess novel, She, Sheena was seen as a fantasy by readers, however, she was also more capable and strong as a man. Phantom Lady was another costume crime fighter who, during her run of comics, her costume becoming more and more revealing, becoming more inappropriate for the younger readers, thus being labelled as morally corrupting children, this led to the formation of the Comics Code Authority in 1954. But before the Comics Code Authority, the creation of Superman introduced us to the famous Lois Lane. While not having superpowers, her wit and strong characteristics even gave her her own arc of stories without Superman in issue Superman 28. However, aspects of Lois's personality varied over the years with the change of writers and their handling of the character. This was due to the social attitudes for women at the time. While some issues Lois Lane did find herself needing to be saved, this was due to her getting over her head with a certain scoop she was trying to get for the Daily Planet and forgetting that she was actually a human being. Then less than one year later, with the first appearance of Batman, Catwoman was introduced. With the first issue, she had no civilian name or motivation and was rather referred to as the Cat. With Batman letting her go after stealing jewels, he comments on her appearance, regardless of the fact that he has a girlfriend by the name of Julie. This even by the first issue, showing the sex appeal Catwoman had on her male counterparts. By 1941, however, Harvard graduate and psychologist William Morton Marston created Wonder Woman. With her first appearance in All-Star Comics issue 8, the idea of Wonder Woman being the propaganda for the new type of women was already cemented. With Marston making Wonder Woman a dominant force while still trying to keep her loving, tender and feminine, Wonder Woman fought for justice, love, peace and gender equality, making her widely considered a feminist icon. With Wonder Woman reflecting cultural tension regarding the women, she also had her limitations. While when getting her own series in 1942, stories of different women in history were also featured. This included Susan B. Anthony, Helen Keller, Amelia Earhart, and many others. Wonder Woman was criticized due to her revealing costume and tales of dominating men by seeing it as a male sexual fantasy, but Master went on to say, Wonder Woman satisfies the subconscious, elaborately disguised desire of males to be mastered by a woman who love them. Regardless, Marston obsessed over gender and the idea that if women were in charge, the world would be a better place. While the argument of Wonder Woman being seen for her beauty and dramatized versions of her sex, she acted as a Trojan horse with alluring male readers into the cultural propaganda that were the strength of women. However, even with such a strong and popular character while being in Justice Society of America, she was used as a secretary as the men went off and did the dirty work. This is even taken into account 
During the November 1945, Market Research Company of America released in a Yank weekly article finding that out of 70 million Americans, half of the population read comic books. With 95% of boys and 91% of girls between the ages of 6 and 11, those of ages between 18 to 30, 41% were male and 28% of female. While catering to the female audience, female characters could be split into three dynamics, the career oriented the romantic role, or the perky teenager. As this was the time of the Second World War, women in the workplace increased from 25% to 36%, even taking tasks of war production. However, comic books were depicted as secretaries, nurses, even teachers, with characters such as Millie the Model or Nellie the Nurse. The second idea of being a romantic role was either a good girl having her heart broken or having her break a man's heart while the dynamic of a perky teenager could be seen through characters such as Betty or Veronica. By the end of the 1940s, women in stories would then discourage, even go so far as having Catwoman's appearance less common and even being declawed, resulting in a stereotypical damsel in distress. With the end of the Second World War, women across all industries were told to give up their jobs for the return of men. With publications by psychiatrist Frederick Witham on the media and its harmful effect on children, the reaction was met with legislation and censorship. His book, Seduction of the Innocent, even stated comic books responsible for juvenile delinquency and Wonder Woman. Being the lesbian counterpart of Batman, this resulted in the comic book code, thus the execution of damaging sexism. This bringing characters such as Wonder Woman and other characters alike to focus on their love lives and with one foul swoop, growth of women in comic books were then neutralized. Thank you very much for watching. If you guys are interested in seeing any other videos like that, please make sure to subscribe so you can be the first ones to watch it. We do take requests on anything you would like us to cover, but just because that was the way it was with comic books doesn't mean it has to be like that. So please leave your comments down below if you wanna give any insight on the topic and we'll hopefully see you soon.